uh, many people have asked about the giant UFO. We've all seen the video. Seems to be sucking plasma off the sun. Uh, this is what it was. It was a coronal cavity. I doubt it was a UFO that was 10 times the size of Jupiter parked right next to a blazing sun. But uh, you notice how perfect the sphere becomes. And so uh, it takes a whole lot of things to come together to uh, make it appear. We haven't seen a whole lot of these, mainly because there hasn't been a whole lot of plasma floating in the corona. So, but when you get more plasma in the corona and you get these big, huge, tight vortices, they will suck and draw in and create a void in that coronal uh, mist. Uh, and if the camera is just right angle, it'll look like a sphere. And then when these filaments lift off the sun, that sphere will pop off the dirt too. And it'll look like a sphere moving away from the sun. Um, first of all, the battle brown dwarf, and you know, we're, we're, Planet X and a brown dwarf are two different things. But a brown dwarf emits X-rays, helium, and electrons. The helium we're seeing already. It's creating geomagnetic storm after geomagnetic storm. Uh, it's neutral helium that's getting ionized by coronal holes. Today, as we come out from the alignment, uh, we think that this has moved to even further south. Um, and the aquarial limb now, because we're coming back around the sun headed towards Aquarius, the aquarial limb should be getting closer and closer to the camera. Um, and, and look, this is an incredible picture. You're actually looking up underneath a ceiling of thin plasma trapped in the corona, um, pulled in by those large vortices. And notice that the glowing plasma in the corona is not glowing beyond the aquarial limb. It's almost where the Earth limb is right now today in this picture, but all the glowing plasma is coming from in front of the sun. Nothing beyond the aquarial limb is really lighting up until it takes up and gets higher in the corona. We think that's because the sun is shielding the backside pocket. Um, you know, th these things don't travel through the sun. So it creates shade or a, a downstream block uh, of this solar wind. But this, I mean, I'm just, I look at this picture and it just amazes me uh, how huge this vortex is. I mean, you're looking, I mean, this conservative to say you can put 10 Earths in that for vortex and it it's actually creating auroras up in the atmosphere. So we think based upon the, the favor, favoring of the southern part of these auroras um, and the forward part, Today, we think the uh, solar wind is coming from in front of the sun and below the ecliptic. And look at this plasma. It almost looks like it's just being carried away in sheets um, rotating with a second interplanetary magnetic field. And an interplanetary magnetic field is the exact same thing as what happens when you turn on a wire current. You have a stream of electrons that create a magnetic field around the wire. Um, so the, the sun has an interplanetary magnetic field that chases after the electrons like a propeller, um, a fan, like a fan blade. And so coming from uh, Aquarius, there's a stream of electrons that come in waves, and those carry with it uh, their own interplanetary magnetic field. And you look at this plasma, it's like a sheet that's being rolled up, um, rotating in a very um, direct corresponding fashion to the right hand rule. The right hand rule governs the rotation of anything in a magnetic field. So the flashing, uh, the, you see the flashing in the corona. The, we, we're almost convinced at this point that that's particle annihilation and that that rate of sparking has increased in the last three years would explain a lot. So you guys don't spend too much time obsessing over coronal cavities. Um, it was a very unique um, circumstances that brought it all together to form that giant sphere. And, and uh, really watch the plasma develop as we move closer and closer to the aquarial limb ourselves, because <clears throat> that's where the plasma will be letting off the sun in huge, huge quantities. So until next time, you guys, um, you guys be prepared. Don't be scared. Um, and oh, somebody out pointed this out to me, I think uh, I think it might have been Todd, that he thought Stereo A was being cropped tighter to the sun, so you couldn't even monitor the corona now from Stereo A. But um, we wanted to just show you that most of the glowing light in the haze is coming from where? In front of the sun. Now, as it turns into the camera, you will not have a good reflection, and that haze um, won't be so obvious and won't light up, but it sure is, looks pretty obvious to me that uh, most of that particle interaction is happening you know, in front of the sun and on the aquarial limb. So you guys, I mean, these are spectacular images. I, these are amazing. But uh, you guys, 
work towards self-sufficiency. And that's all you can do. A lot of talk about EMPs. Uh, that's probably the most scariest thing to me are the man-made uh, things that are going on. And uh, we got emails from people saying we were liars, but you know, we've been having s consistent geomagnetic storms. They died down when we dove behind the sun, and now that we come and we're peeking back out in March, we peek out and can see the Aquarius again. Uh, they're starting right back up again. So um, you guys, it, it's all very consistent. Um, you guys, get ready. Lynn should be getting closer and closer to the camera um, and and look this is an incredible picture you're actually looking up underneath a ceiling of thin plasma trapped in the corona um, pulled in by those large vortices and notice that the glowing plasma in the corona is not glowing beyond the aquarial limb it's almost where the earth limb is right now today in this picture but all the glowing plasma is coming from in front of the sun nothing beyond the aquarial limb is really lighting up until it takes up and gets higher in the corona we think that's because the sun is shielding the backside pocket um, you know th these things don't travel through the sun so it creates shade or a, a downstream block uh, of this solar wind. But this, I mean, I'm just—I look at this picture and it just amazes me uh, how huge this vortex is. I mean, you're looking—I mean, this conservative to say you can put 10 Earths in that for vortex, and it—it's actually creating auroras up in the atmosphere. So we think based upon the the favor, favoring of the southern part of these auroras um, and the forward part today we think the uh, solar wind is coming from in front of the sun and below the ecliptic and look at this plasma it almost looks like it's just being carried away in sheets um, rotating with a second interplanetary magnetic field and an interplanetary magnetic field is the exact same thing as what uh, solar wind is coming from in front of the sun and below the ecliptic. And look at this plasma. It almost looks like it's just being carried away in sheets um, rotating with a second interplanetary magnetic field. And an interplanetary magnetic field is the exact same thing as what happens when you turn on a wire current. You have a stream of electrons that create a magnetic field around the wire. Um, so the, the sun has an interplanetary magnetic field that chases after the electrons like a propeller, um, a fan, like a fan blade. And so coming from uh, Aquarius, there's a stream of electrons that come in waves, and those carry with it uh, their own interplanetary magnetic field. And you look at this plasma, it's like a sheet that's being rolled up, um, rotating in a very um, direct corresponding fashion to the right hand rule the right hand rule governs the rotation of anything in a magnetic field so the flashing uh, the you see the flashing in the corona the, we we're almost convinced at this point that that's particle annihilation and that that rate of sparking has increased in the last three years would explain a lot so you guys don't spend too much time obsessing over coronal cavities um, it was a very unique um, circumstances that brought it all together to form that giant sphere and and uh, really watch the plasma develop as we move